Hmm. Music suggestions. What do you got for me, Toby? What? 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 What do you got there, huh? Hmm. Okay.
Duff, we're not supposed to, I'm pretty sure. We are going to sandbag the airplane. I don't think it's right side up. Uh, well, it's not supposed to. So we're going to take this airplane here, and we're going to put those boxes of uh, food on the wings to simulate G-loading. So I'm going to go assemble this, and you got to go feed your girlfriend. So, uh, yeah. Okay, Sam, you back? Yep. All right. So uh, are you building this to fly in uh, China or something? Why, well, because it's upside down? Yeah. Haha, uh -huh, very lame joke. Okay, let's load the wings up with, uh, with those boxes of noodles over there. What'd you say? I'm waiting for the comment. You didn't load your elevator. Oh. Well, technically, we can actually load that, too, but I'm 100% confident that I can take over, like, 20, 30 pounds before it breaks, which is more than enough. Wait, well, not 20, 30. I mean, about 80 pounds. Are you doing any cabling on that? Huh? Are you doing any cabling on the elevator? I have that one flying wire thing put on. That does nothing for... Yeah, but that's for flying inverted. Positive loads. Flying inverted. Yeah. But hey, check this out. I got these cables done over here. Like, I got these done. So those oh, you did them right this enough. time. Yeah, I put the thing. In, I put the thing in the thing. Listen to your so, commenters. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't really know what I'm doing because this is a learning experiment for me. So that came out pretty cool. I'm happy with that. This is actually like one sixteenth cable right here, or not one sixteenth. This is a one eighth, I believe. It's the really heavy duty one. I think uh, it's rated for up to two thousand two hundred pounds, and that turnbuckle's two thousand two hundred pounds as well. Somebody comment if he crimped wrong. Yeah, let me know. It's got those crimps. It took a long time to crimp, though. All right, let's load it. <laughs> now it's experiencing, it should, I think this is 1G, I'm not really sure. I'm putting it on the bottom wing. Like right there. <laughs> okay, right now this should be 1G because I'm simulating my weight in it. I think that's how it works. I don't really know because it's, it's 1G just flying there. I don't know. I'm wearing on the side of caution, adding this weight to it. So now we're gonna go up to 2.5 G. So the all weight of this airplane is uh, with me in it, 370 pounds is what it should be. Oh, by the way, I did wear this fuselage. I've noticed some people said, oh, that thing's gotta be 500, 600 pounds. Are you guys crazy? Even before I fiberglass this thing, this whole thing only weighs about 170 pounds on the scale. So glassing at three quarters ounce cloth on the wing should only add at the most 10 pounds. So let's go with that. Now we're gonna do, so two Gs, I need 370 pounds. So we're going to put 370 pounds worth of these boxes on it, and that takes us to 2 Gs. We'll add 0.5 Gs to that, which is half of that, like so another 150 pounds or so. And then that should be more than safe enough for the first flight. Good I'm going to put this one in here. Really badly. I mean, this does carry low. Okay, so right now we have uh, we have our 2Gs. We have uh, we have like 10 boxes of this stuff, and so that's like how many pounds is that? So 10 and boxes. And we know it's times. not evenly distributed. Yeah, it's, we're kind of cheating a little before bit. Before you're commenting. Yeah. We also got to put more boxes on it because I want to go to 2.5Gs to be just even more. What's half and half? Well, half from like the strut to the tip. No, a foot. A foot? A foot. That's cool. So that's our 2.5 about G's. And that's pretty even now. Wow, that's pretty good. Look at your joints. What joints? The deflection in the joints. What joints? Like here? Yeah. There's not really any. From the top one. So we're definitely flying on the airplane because that's not touching the ground for all you who are wondering. Uh, it goes all the way to the other side. Just kind of floating there. Right above the gravel. There's my hand. Cool, so this is actually really good. It can take the 2.5 G's, no issue. If I was crazy enough, I'd sit on it too until you'd sit on the other side. But I don't. I really want to go flying. I don't have time to rebuild the airplane. <laughs> Okay, it is now question time where we answer all of your YouTube questions and comments. Alright, give me a second. Let me load this thing up. You should take your dog with you in the plane on your maiden voyage. No. I could use some nose white. I'm, I'm just saying. 
No, the not the annoying royalty free music I've heard about 48 times now. Not too rude, but absolutely despises music. Thank you for your input. I should listen to my comment section ever again. Just kidding, this song was chosen by one of our comment uh, commenters again, so yeah, keep the suggestions coming. Uh, if you do want to pick a music for me to use, please make sure it's something royalty free and also like free to use so I won't pay a license for it. Because I'm kind of cheap for all this right now. This airplane's cost me too much money. Okay, next one. Uh, just love this build, really enjoy such projects, and I'm pretty sure I'll start building an ultralight when I'm done with my current project. Do you have any advice for building a plane like this? Maybe even have a look at the adventure bus build on my channel and throw some feedback at me. Ha ha ha. Great job as always. Oh, I actually did answer this comment. This guy's like building a cool bus. I forgot what was going on in it, but it was like, it kind of reminds me of our food truck, which is like right over there, which you probably can't see because there's no lights on it. But uh, yeah, that's a food truck from, uh, my dad and you built, Sam. Yeah. I was still working at Flightus at that time, but uh, some that's advice fun. would be to do a lot of research, mainly Look at other existing designs, because for me, I don't really have an aero engineering degree and I built this thing. As you saw, the wings are strong enough to fly. And the funny thing is most people that build all flights don't actually test the structures to, you know, flying weight. They just assume it's good enough because, you know, you build according to plans and as long as you did it right, you should be fine, which is all right. But I don't really know what I'm doing, so I copied other planes that I've seen, such as like the foam shear web uh, that is going for this uh, bottom wing. That is actually copied off another airplane called the Sky Pup which is made out of foam and that was designed by a Cessna engineer. And I thought, you know, if that thing is strong enough and doesn't have flying wires, I should be all right. So yeah, do your research. Also be sure to ignore some naysayers, like the people that told me this thing's gonna be like 500, 600 pounds. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, those people are crazy. I don't know who thinks it's gonna be that, that heavy. But uh, I weighed it, 170 pounds on the scale, as is uh, my tail section, which is 10 pounds. But uh, yeah, uh, 10 pounds of glass on top of that, which is erring on the heavy side at least from the way I've been doing things. And the fuselage has been glass for all people who do not know. So, uh, yeah, moving on. All these videos are leading up to your death. Well, hopefully not. I'm doing everything testing it kind of methodically, so hopefully, no. If I do die, it'll probably be because of me getting in over my abilities, like trying something stupid, like trying to fly under a bridge or something. Uh, okay, next question or comment or thing. Uh, are you sure the wing won't break when you land? There will be high tension on the wings. Good luck, by the way. Well, that's technically what those are for, which is the landing wire. So the wing shouldn't break. That's another story but, uh, with the landing gear because there's you know, really no suspension on that. Also, if you were paying attention to the other video, you know, when you got on it and I got on it and the wings were bending or wheels were bending, that's because that was only like half a wheel. There was no actual other portion to that. So it was just like a test piece. It wasn't really meant to be sat on, but now I have some lightweight foam tires on there. I'll probably do the 3D print thing later on once I figure out the suspension as well. Next one. I think it's going to work, but it does get scarier and more tense every time a part is released. Ha ha ha. Uh, yeah. It is getting pretty terrifying. I mean, I'm, I get to look at this thing every day and it's terrifying because I have to go flying in it. But, uh, yeah, motor's next week and uh, fiberglass in the wings and that should be the last part to it. The other rounds are also being built. I got them halfway done that you saw in the, earlier in this video. But, uh, they gotta get installed. Link just gotta be ran and, uh, then we gotta go fly it. So there's one more video until the actual flying video of this plane thing. Hey, here's the question. Do you work on your ultralight bit by bit a day or do you like set a uh, date and set a date for you to go ham on it? it? Sounds like all my thesis papers, doing it over three days instead of three months. Hey, that's how I did all my college papers and stuff. Oh, hey, um, yeah, it's due, uh, due tomorrow. Due tomorrow. Hey, you shut up. But uh, this plane, I, I kind of build like, you know, a couple hours every day and I kind of procrastinate a lot and like play some GTA and whatever. So I don't get as much on it done as I should, but I do kind of rush it in the last couple of days. Like these wings actually got built really fast. These were done in the course of like six days. So that's awesome. Oh, also for those of you wondering, these actually got cut at a uh, foam cutting place. Uh, I think it was called Global Foam or something. They're actually like in Dayton, Ohio. So I went to them, got the wings cut. They cost me about $300 to cut all these wings, including materials for foam and all that. So that was actually pretty convenient when you consider my time that I had to spend to cut these out by hand. I could easily do it, but it's really not worth my time when they have a CNC cutter, so I guess you can probably check them out for all that stuff. Uh, oh, that was hot wire. Yeah, hot, CNC hot, wire, hot wire. Yeah, CNC hot wire, okay. Oh, I like this one. Do you think Flight Test will allow you to fly this at Flight Fest next year? Hey, Austin, what do you think about this? Is it legally scary? I mean, it's kind of like a paramotor, but, you know, it has wings and stuff. I don't know. I have to trail it down there. So, maybe. I hey. think it has a sketch factor of five or six, which is acceptable. Yeah. 
I mean, I just made it myself, you know. It's, it's an airplane after all. Uh, okay, moving on to the next question. Maybe I should bring you to Flight Fest South. Hey, Josh, can you buy me a ticket to Flight Fest South? I'm out of money. I spent all on this airplane. You could have picked up your BRS that way. Oh, yeah. Oh, about the BRS. Uh, I did find one on, like, this group called Man Magnificent Men and Their Flying Machines on Facebook. Some guy was selling for 1500 so I actually did get the BRS. So I probably will be shutting down the, uh... GoFundMe. The GoFundMe in the next few days. Or maybe I should let it sit out there and see if anyone else wants to give me some free money to help to get this thing in the air. But I think almost all the financial bits of this plane are done. So the BRS is coming. That'll be installed in the next coming weeks. Motors will be installed. Uh, yeah. All right, one, one or two more of these and uh, we're done. All right, All right. Uh, last question. Hey, Peter, I noticed you didn't put any thread lock on the bolts. Don't forget this. This thing is going to vibrate a lot. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think uh, as far as like an AN certified mechanic? Should I put the red locker on these? Like, I have self-tightening nuts where the nuts have, you know, the, the nylon portion. Because I heard somewhere that the red locker will eat away plastic such as the nylon itself, so you don't really want to use the red locker with it. I don't really know the logistics of that. I heard it on the internet, so I'm not sure how true that is. But also, any part that actually has a regular castle nut will be safety wire, which is anything to do with the flying wires, main controls, uh, wing braces, uh, and so on and such on. So those should never come out of there. But uh, as far as the other stuff, it's kind of probably already too late. Yeah, do you put Loctite on that? Loctite on, on self-locking nuts. Is that good practice? Because, uh, yeah. All I right, would put let me know. Lock wire on everything. Yeah, well, where I, where I could. Okay. Well, we got to drill the hole and put them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I know. I'm going to get this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I guess that takes care of uh, this segment of part five of Will It Crash? Uh, yeah. Um, see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bring the camera over here. We gotta put his paw on the camera. Do, do, do the Casey Neistat wave.